Alright, a lesson for God's Word and a lesson for our sermon today is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here the Apostle Paul teaches us about the Holy Spirit. Therefore I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirit's to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. This is God's work. Dear friends in Jesus, it was March 26, 1993. Some of us aren't good at remembering specific dates. But this man was very good at remembering a specific date. It was March 26, 1993. You know what this man was talking about? The day that he became a Christian. A number of years ago when I was a vicar, I was a practice pastor near Atlanta, Georgia, I was visiting a, a couple who had come and visited our church. And they were a nice Christian couple. We talked for a long time. In the middle of our conversation, this man said, on March 26, 1993, I became a Christian. And they said, that, that's an awfully specific date. Are you sure it was exactly on that date that you became a Christian? And he looked at me kind of surprised. He said, absolutely. Because on March 26, 1993, I finally opened up my heart and accepted Jesus as my Savior. I've been pushing him off. I've been putting him off. But finally on that day, I made my decision and my life has not been the same since. I opened my heart to Christ. Now I know I'm saved since March 26th, 1993. And he looked at me and he said, what about you? What's your date? What date did you accept Christ and become a Christian? But I have to admit, I, I felt a little foolish. I don't know what to say. I don't have a date. Do you have a date? So I, I think I said something like, well, I, I've been a Christian as long as I can remember. I, all the way back to when I was baptized as a little baby. But compared to his bold confession, March 26, 1993, I, it felt kind of foolish. And he certainly thought it was foolish. He said, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. That's not the real thing. When did you accept Christ in your heart? When did you really become a Christian? If you think that us like pastor people, we always have the right answer to what everybody says. That day I did not have the right answer. And as I walked out the door, I was kicking myself. I didn't know what to say. I don't have a date. Should I have a date? Do you have a date? Well, if you don't have a date in your mind for the exact date that you became a Christian... That's okay. Because what that man was telling me is impossible. What that man was saying about opening up his heart and accepting Christ on that particular date, it's impossible. Do you know what? Because here's what the Bible says. No one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. These are such important words from the Bible. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Faith in Jesus is not about my choosing or my deciding or my opening up my heart. Faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Whether that man realized it or not, he was claiming for himself credit for what God had done in his heart. On March 26, 1993, I made my decision for Christ. That's impossible. Because no one can say, 
Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It's too easy for us to take credit for what God does. A few years ago, I, I went to the country of Colombia to study Spanish. And while I was in Colombia, I, I went to a, a Catholic mass at a really big, beautiful Catholic cathedral. And I still remember what the priest preached about. The theme of, of his sermon was, take the first step. He said, God is, is right by you. He, God's always there to help you, but you have to take the first step. Actually makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? If we want God to help us, we've got to take the first step. We've got to welcome him into our lives. We've got to decide to believe in him. Take the first step. It's just as a problem. I can't. I can't take the first step. You can't either. Do you know what the Bible says you and I are like by nature as human beings? Apostle Paul said, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. Nothing good lives in me. We want to say, come on, Paul. There's a little bit of good in all of us, right? Not according to the Bible. Nothing. In a different place, Paul says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Without the Holy Spirit, we're, we're dead. What, what can a dead person do? Nothing. Paul, earlier in 1 Corinthians, he writes, The one without the Spirit cannot accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Without the Holy Spirit, we're not just a little bit weak. We don't just need a little help. According to the Bible, without the Holy Spirit, we're, we're dead. We're powerless. Can't do anything. There's no, no free will. It's not from the Bible. Can't take the first step. And so God did. God took the first step. God became a human being in the form of Jesus. Jesus lived a perfect life and died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead and after he ascended to heaven, Jesus poured out God the Holy Spirit onto his disciples and they proclaimed the gospel to the whole world. And for the last 2,000 years, God has preserved the preaching of his word through wars and pandemics and persecution. And after all of that, God created you. God made you. And then God shows you to believe in him through the work of the Holy Spirit, through baptism, through the, the word of God. The Bible talks about how God chose us. It says, he chose the lowly things of this world, the despised things, the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 28 to 30. And now after all of that, are you and I going to say that we take the first step? Who are we kidding you don't take the first step. God takes all of the steps. It's not up to you and me to find God because God isn't lost. Did you know that? God isn't lost. It's up to God to find us because we ignore God and we push God away and we get lost in our sins and so God searches for us and he finds us and he showers us with his grace. Jesus told his disciples, you did not choose me. Can you finish what he said? But I chose you. John 15, verse 13. How about, how about this verse? The Bible says, we love because he first loved us. Don't worry about the timeline. It's not about a date. Being a Christian isn't about deciding or choosing. It's about God's grace being showered on us from beginning to end God chose us. And on the day of Pentecost, it's good for us to be very specific. Who is it who put faith in Jesus in our hearts? It's the Holy Spirit. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired the men who wrote down the words of the Bible so that they were the word of God. The Holy Spirit entered into your heart on the day that you were baptized 
The Holy Spirit uses God's word every time you hear it to work faith in Jesus in your heart. The Holy Spirit works through the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper to give us the forgiveness of sins and increase our faith in Jesus. It's all by the Holy Spirit. No one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Those words from the Bible are so clear that even enemies of the Christian church have picked up on them. So I was studying this lesson from God's Word. I learned that in the year 112 AD, the year 112, a Roman governor named Pliny wrote a letter to the Roman emperor named Trajan describing what should be done about Christians. Again, it's about 100 years after the time of Jesus Roman leaders talking to each other, what should we do with the Christians? And as Roman governor, Pliny, he said to the Roman emperor, he said, I, I know what needs to be done about Christians. When people are brought before me and they're accused of being Christians, I command them to curse Christ. And if they refuse, I command them a second and a third time with threats of punishments. And if they still refuse to curse Christ, then I have them be executed. But if people are brought before me, who others say are Christians, and I ask them to curse Christ, and they do it, they say that they never were and are not Christians, they curse Christ, then I just let them go. Because it's said that no one who is really a Christian will be able to curse Christ. It's like he knew the words from our lesson, from 1 Corinthians. No one who is speaking by the Spirit of God can say, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the, the Holy Spirit. In the, the ancient Roman Empire, it was really easy to know what to do with Christians. Ask them if they believe in Jesus. If yes, kill them. If no, then just let them go. Doesn't that make all that God talks about a little bit more real? What are we going to do when that starts to happen again? What are you going to do when Christians are once again brought before the government authorities and told to, to curse Christ and be punished? Or to curse Christ or be executed? What are you going to do? How are you going to be able to stand firm in your faith? How are you going to be able to not take the easy way out and curse Christ and go, how am I not going to fall? There's only one way. By the Holy Spirit. Only by the Holy Spirit. If my faith is the result of my decision, you know what? I could easily decide to unfollow Jesus. Don't we do that all the time? On Facebook, when you get annoyed by that awkward person, you, you unfollow him, right? If it's my decision, I can undecide. If I open up the door to my heart to Jesus, I can easily close that door to Jesus when times get tough or difficult, but that's not what faith is. Faith is by the Holy Spirit working in our hearts through the Word of God, and so our prayer is, Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Holy Spirit, dispel my doubts. Holy Spirit, don't let me fall. Faith is only by the Holy Spirit. But that's not all that the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit doesn't just put faith in our hearts and then set it off. Our lesson tells us so much more about the Holy Spirit's working in our lives. It, it says there are many kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are many kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are many kinds of working, but in all of them, in everyone, the same God is at work. To each one, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The Holy Spirit is also the one who gives us gifts, talents, and abilities, and opportunities, spiritual gifts that are meant to be used for the common good. Paul gives us a whole list of examples of these spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit uses in our lives. He says to, to one is given through the Spirit... Uh, a message of wisdom. 
To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are our work of one and the same Spirit who distributes them to each one as he determines. The Holy Spirit is actively at work distributing his gifts to each and every person who believes in Jesus. Whatever good that we do, whatever talent that we have, whatever gift that we can use to serve others, it's all by the Holy Spirit. Do we give the Holy Spirit credit for that? I said that it's so easy for us to take credit for what God has done in our lives. That's true about decision theology. That's what we were talking about before. This idea that I decide, that I start, and God finishes. True. God takes the first step. But it's just as easy after God has put faith in our hearts to think that now it's up to us to carry it on, to carry it through. I once had a a lady interrupt my, my sermon in a different church. During the worship service, a lady actually stood up and interrupted my sermon. I'm not encouraging this. Okay, this is not what I want you to do. But as I was preaching, she stood up and she said, that's enough about Jesus, now we've got to do our part. That's enough about Jesus. Now we've got to do our part. Maybe you'd never say it that crassly. Hopefully you'd never get up and say that in the middle of a sermon. Isn't that often the attitude in our hearts? Sure, I know about Jesus, but look at all the gifts that I have. Look at what I can do. Don't other people realize how gifted I am? Don't people see all the things that I'm doing for Jesus? Except, what good are you and I able to do without the Holy Spirit? Nothing. Zero. Right? Zip. So how much glory do you and I deserve for any of the good that comes out of our lives? None. Zero. Zip. All of these are gifts of of one and the same Spirit who distributes them to each one as He determines. This is a good thing. The Holy Spirit has given you gifts. Do you know what they are? God wants you to know so that you can use them for the common good. Do you have a gift of wisdom or knowledge? Then use it by the Holy Spirit. Do you have a gift of words or language or speaking? Then use it by the Holy Spirit. Do you have a gift of distinguishing between right and wrong? By the Holy Spirit, you have a gift of serving or encouraging or giving. And use it by the Holy Spirit. In the Christian church, there's no room for pride. There's also no room for being jealous. There's also no room for feeling left out. God, the Holy Spirit, has given you exactly the gifts that he wants you to use for the common good. See how important the Holy Spirit is? Sometimes we treat the Holy Spirit like he's the forgotten member of the Holy Trinity. We think a lot about God the Father. He created us. We pray all the time, right? Our Father in heaven. We think a lot about God the Son, about Jesus, how he died on the cross for our sins and rose to give us eternal life. Yet we could never know or believe any of that without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. How do dead, blind, sinful people become the gifted children of God? It's by the Holy Spirit. It makes this the the perfect message for Confirmation Day. I told Kaylee as we were getting ready for today that I wasn't going to make the service all about her. Because it's not really all about her. Kaylee confesses her faith today as all of you think back to the day when you were confirmed, when you confessed your faith too. It really wasn't about you, was it? 
It was all by the Holy Spirit. If you and I have faith in Jesus as our Savior, how did it get there? By the Holy Spirit. If you and I are going to continue to grow in our faith, how's that going to happen? By the Holy Spirit, working through God's Word, and through baptism and the Lord's Supper. If you and I are going to use our gifts for the common good, how's that going to happen? By the Holy Spirit. Do you sense a, a theme? By the Holy Spirit, working through God's word and the means of grace, the gospel in word and sacrament. Let other people boast about their dates. Let other Christians claim to boast about the big decisions that they've made. Let other Christians boast about their great commitment to God. But you rejoice in this. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It's all by the Holy Spirit. To God be the glory. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Holy Spirit, it, it's too easy for us in our lives to, to forget about you. We like to take credit for your work in our hearts. We take credit for deciding to come to faith. And then we take credit for all the things we think we're doing by our own power. And yet behind it all, dear Holy Spirit, is you. No one can say Jesus is Lord without you working in their hearts. Dear Lord Jesus, today on Pentecost, on Confirmation Sunday, we pray that you continue to work in the hearts of every one of us. Use your word and the sacraments to increase our faith in Jesus, to increase our trust in the grace of God, and to be motivated and empowered to live lives that give glory to you. Thank you, dear Spirit, for your work in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.